We are ready to go on a Tuesday afternoon. Taking to the streams. The Scott and BR Show is back from Callaway headquarters in Carlsbad, California. From the Corky's Pest Control Studios. What is up, great friends throughout all of Southern California and worldwide? What's up over here? Worldwide on all the platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and TuneIn, and every place else. So what's going on? All right, yesterday, I had Linda here, and I had Billy Ray here. This young man right here, I'm looking at this guy. Take a look at this kid right here. Grande Alejandro Padilla. What's up? And sitting next to Grande, well, at this point is nobody, but Burt Grossman, who always wants maximum airtime, mm-hmm. Empty seat right there for Bert. Yep. You have any expectation as to Bert coming today? Uh, yeah, I do have expectations because he said he would be here. Um, I don't know what time he'll ever show up because I'll tell him 3.30 every time. There's days he walks in at 2.45. There's days he walks in at 4.15, and he complains either way. So uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. Well, listen, I want to say this. I want to try and do as much today in advance of Bert Grossman storming this studio we always do this to ourselves you know this before you even say what you're about to say we do this to ourselves every tuesday right we have like a whole show prepared Mm -hmm. and then bert comes in and everything goes off the rails and i always think to myself today's show sucked and bert sucks and then i leave and people text me and they're like bert's freaking hilarious You should have him on all day, every day. Right. I have the exact same feeling every Tuesday. Yeah, like, I think Bert sucks. (laughs) But everybody else loves him. Yeah. And I'm exaggerating when I say he's like, I'm just saying that, like, he'll come in, he'll lounge around, he'll just add a couple of comments here or there, he'll talk about his dating life, he doesn't watch any baseball, he doesn't know anything about any football, he really doesn't bring much to the table other than... He's a character. I mean, every every week, every Tuesday, I feel like he has his own agenda that he wants to get to. We just don't know what it is until he gets here. And sometimes the agenda is, is maybe one question. Anything's going to go for an hour. And then we have nothing with him. <laughs> so it's just, it, it's yeah, we never know. But I have the same feeling. I'm like, well, that wasn't very good. But All people right. love him. Let me do this. Let me start off. Because like I said, I want to do a bunch of stuff before Bert just comes in here and, and steals the show and takes us way off track. Okay, listen. Let me start off with this. We've got a great giveaway, and it's only a 24-hour deal. And let me just explain how this works for a minute. You know, when we were on radio, and we were only on radio, giveaways were immediate. Hey, caller 10, call right now. This is your stuff. Come get it. What happens now is, for those of you that are listening on TuneIn, you're listening to the live stream. But what happens between now when we're live and tomorrow, 24 hours later, thousands of other people will have listened to the podcast that we put out or they'll have watched on YouTube. And that's why you see the numbers go from what they are when people are watching live versus what they are 24 hours later. Okay. So we're doing a giveaway right now, but we'll give it away 25 hours from right now. 25 hours. We'll give it away tomorrow, Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time live on the air stream stream right live Live here in the show right we will give it away live on the show at 4 p.m on wednesday here's what we're giving away and well if you could pull this up on the screen here this is the second annual clf classic chelsea's light foundation uh for those of you that will remember years ago chelsea king was abducted and i don't want to get too dark about it but you know the story she was murdered And uh, this was a 17 or 18 year old girl who was getting ready to go off to college and was taken from a park where she was out for a run in Rancho Bernardo here in San Diego. So this Saturday, the 13th, the Rancho Bernardo Inn, it's the second annual Chelsea's Light Golf Tournament. There's a beer garden with all local breweries. There's a huge poker tournament afterwards. There's a chance to win a trip to the Masters and all proceeds will fund the college scholarship program as well as the foundation's new initiatives. And I could tell you a whole lot more about this, but here's what I could tell you at this moment. If you can't play golf and you'd still like to donate, you can see right there on the website that there is an opportunity to do so. And that's chelseaslight.org. I hope I'm getting it right. Allison, you may have to come in here and correct me. Chelseaslight.org. I hope I'm getting it right. I hope I'm getting the website right. So here's the thing. 
The golf tournament is Saturday. It's followed by a bo- poker tournament. Come on back into the studio, guys, and, and somebody make sure you tell me what the right URL you is. You said it right. I did? Okay, thank you. Beer garden, poker tournament, golf tournament. It's $1,000 for a foursome. This is my foursome, and I'm giving it to the great friends. I'm giving it to you. Have it. It's yours. I wish I could get out there. Brent King has become a, a friend and a, and a guy who I just have so much love and admiration for. He was on my podcast a few weeks ago. Um, so go ahead. Did I, did I get it right? Yeah, Chelsea's Light. Chelsea's Light.org. Okay. So, so here's the situation. They offered us the chance for a foursome. I unfortunately just can't go this Saturday. So we said, can we give it away to the great friends? If you would like to support this phenomenal organization, if you would like to play golf at the Rancho Bernardo Inn, if you'd like to drink at a beer garden all afternoon, if you would like to play poker that evening, if you'd like to have a chance to win a trip to the Masters, this is it. This is your shot. And we're giving away this prize package 25 hours from right now. 25 hours. Very cool. Okay. How? How can, how can I win? Here's how you can it's win. It's not caller 10. It's not caller 54 in honor of the big old rascal. That's what I say on radio. I go, hey, uh, Alex, caller 54. Caller 54 in honor of the big old rascal. Let's do it. And I would it. take caller 5 or 4. <laughs> not 54. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. You're, you're, you're caller 1. Yeah. You're caller 2. You're caller 3. Hey, you're caller 54. Congratulations. Yeah. You won. Congrats. We're not doing the call-in thing. Here's what I want everybody to do. As you know, I've been working hard for the last couple of years, simultaneously developing this platform called Sided. I've never really, really gone too deep into what it's supposed to do. And it's a radio tool. It's for radio stations to be able to drive engagement so that they can put their advertisers back in touch with the listeners and the users off air. And I could get into it a lot deeper, but here's how I want you to win. It's super easy, okay? Tonight's the all-star game for Major League Baseball. Last night was the home run derby. And I must admit that going into the derby, I had very little interest. And there were times during the home run derby where I was bored out of my freaking mind. Yesterday. Correct. Okay. There were times during the home run derby, I was bored out of my freaking mind. And then this whole Vladimir Guerrero Jr. thing happened. And Jock Peterson from the Dodgers happened. And, you know, the guy who hits the most home runs in the early stages generally doesn't win because he's run out of gas. Mm -hmm. By the way, the Total T Clinic will fill your tank, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Next year you'll win. Total T Clinic. Not sure if that's legal in MLB. I think it is. Okay, cool. I think it is. So I was bored for, and, and then the Vlad Guerrero thing started to happen in the 38, 39, 40, and same with Peterson. You're like, whoa, this became very exciting. Mm-hmm. So baseball, top of mind. And I know a lot of people who are tuning in are huge San Diego Padre fans. So Padre fans, I'm going to make this super easy for you. If you want to win the $1,000 golf tournament foursome, you and your friends this Saturday, Rancho Bernardo Inn, supporting Chelsea's Light Foundation, which is a phenomenal organization. Uh, You want to win a trip to the Masters. You want to have beer all day. You want to play poker at night. My foursome is your foursome. Here's how you win. 25 hours from right now. Guys, pull it up. If you go on to Sided.co, Sided.co, that's it, real simple. The debate that I posted is about the San Diego Padres and about the second half of the season. So, guys, if you can, I know. There we go. Okay. With the second half of the Major League Baseball season upon us, will the Padres finish the 2019 season above 500? Oof. What's everybody think? Oof. So, I don't know if you know this about me, um, because when I give my strong opinions is when you're not here. It's when I'm hosting, when I'm sitting there. So, go ahead. Give them. Hell no. No. I've thought, like, they have been playing above... I mean, they've been playing 500 ball all season long. This pitching with all these pitchers and their limits and their pitcher limits, it's going to catch up to them eventually. I know that the Nelson Lamette came back and you guys... And Cal Quantro's on the, in the bullpen. But I just don't see it. Not this year. They'll be close. They will be close. But no. Not okay. above 500. All right, so go back. So now, guys, go back. Pull it up. Pull it up again. With the second half of the Major League Baseball season upon us, will the Padres finish the 2019 season above 500? If you click, fellas, on the citation right there, just click on that content. If you click on that, you can go and you can read up 
whoever posted this, well, I know I posted it, but Allison really posted it. Um, Allison posted it, and she put up an article. So you can say, okay, three things the Padres should do after the All-Star break, and I don't know who wrote this. Oh, Derek Togerson from NBC7. Okay, Derek, a little shout-out to you, pal. And so Allison posted this. Okay, close this now. Close this now, and this will get you. So you could read that and then come back in and then scroll up, guys, so that people can find out where they can put their comments. So I guess it's really more like scroll down. Scrolling down. There you go. I never know the difference. So nobody's in this debate yet. We just started it. We literally just started it. Now, in 25 hours, come on back into the studio, fellas. In 25 hours from now, that debate will close at 4 p.m. Pacific time. All you have to do is go in, write your comment on why the Padres will finish above 500 or why the Padres will not finish above 500. People will read your comments. They'll click the like button. Those who receive the most likes on the winning side, that's the winner. So if if 60% say no and 40% say yes, the person who had the most compelling argument on the side of no, the winning side, that person is therefore declared the winner. Does that make sense? Am I eligible? I would say... Because at the radio station, I would not be eligible. I would say... I would say... Yeah, I would say, right, given that this is not a job, that this is a volunteer position, I would say that you can win this, Alex. So I would say that if you go on Decided right now and you type up why the Padres will not finish above 500, I think people might actually vote for you. All right. People might vote. And then we'll you, you and, and I know you don't even really want to play golf, and I know you may not even want to play poker, but that beer garden sounded good, didn't it? Uh, driving a golf cart while drinking beers always sounds good. Okay. And I, know I have nice golf clubs, thanks to Callaway, so maybe I will golf. So you got the Callaway golf clubs. I'll go into Jason Finley's office right now, and I'll steal five dozen golf balls for you mm -hmm. and all your friends. Mm -hmm. Maybe more, maybe ten dozen. Probably the way we play. Okay. And then you can take all your friends out to play golf at the Rancho Bernardo Inn, represent, but you got to go on Decided.co, and you've got to make a compelling argument, and then people have to vote for you, Alex. I understand. But you are now eligible to win. Sweet. One more time, um, Emwell, if you don't mind, pull this up on the screen. It's the second annual CLF Golf Classic. This is Chelsea's Light Foundation Golf and po Poker Tournament. It's this Saturday. It is happening uh, at the Rancho Bernardo Inn. And if you have five you know, minutes spare in your life, in fact, Al, we might want to do this later, is um, we might want to promote the Brent King podcast from a few weeks ago. You did? Yeah. You posted it this morning? I, I need to retweet? Okay. Got it. It's from Allison, and I need to retweet. I'll do it. Okay. I will do it. Okay, so thanks, guys. Thanks for doing that, Emwell and Jacob. What do you think? I don't think the Padres finish above 500 either. And, and, and here's the thing. See, the thing about Padre fans are they haven't had this excitement in ages, meaning chances are the last 10 years of your Padre fanhood, this season has been over by right now. Can we all agree? Mm -hmm. Can we all agree? I mean, statistically speaking, the baseball season was over by where we are right now. All-star break. Like, when they would come back, I'd say, when's training camp start? When does NFL training camp start? I believe it's the first time in nine years that they have a 500 record at the all-star break. So that's what I'm saying. So, so that's what I'm saying. So so look, they, they have excitement that Padre fans have not felt in a long time. In the form of Manny Machado, mm -hmm. obviously this kid Tatis. By the way, the Padres putting out Mike Trout being asked a question. Somebody, I think it was MLB TV, asked Mike Trout. They say, "Hey, who do you think are like some of the young, exciting star players coming up in baseball?" And he's like, "Um, I don't know. Mm, that's a tough question. I'm not really sure." Hey, I've seen some highlights of that kid Tatis down in San Diego, and the Padres blasted this everywhere. Like, even Mike Trout thinks that Fernando Tatis is the most exciting young player in baseball. The Padres have not had a player like this that makes fans believe in at least 10 years, at least. I, I would argue you can go back to 2001, I believe, that's a long-ass time ago, when Jake Peavy made his first start against the Yankees at freaking Qualcomm Stadium pitching for the Padres. So you can't tell Padre fans what you just told them, which is they're not going to finish above 500. You've just pissed off a whole bunch of people. I know, but that's what I was saying that what you don't know about me is that I'm a very uh, pessimistic person. And I think I've been molded that way by the San Diego Padres and the former San Diego Chargers. 
every time you get your hopes up, they trend, they tend to uh, kind of squish you like a bug here in this city. So may it change my mind. Prove me wrong. Like that's what everybody wants to see. Allison, you know what you might want to do is go into the um, YouTube comment section and tweet or I don't know, post the uh, sided debate so that all these guys who are here in the YouTube comment section can click on the link and then they can go get involved. Because I would hope that whoever wins this $1,000 prize package, and by the way, I'm saying $1,000, it's, it's more than that because it's $250 per player at this tournament. So we're giving you $1,000. You and your buddies are going to go play, plus all the beers, like I said, and plus the poker tournament later on and the chance to win the Masters prize package. What else? Oh, and, and bring some, bring a couple bucks because, you know, you're going to want to play poker and you're going to want to have some fun. So bring a couple bucks because that's, you know, it's all donations. So um, I hope that somebody who's watching on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook or listening on TuneIn, I hope you guys wind up winning this because otherwise it could be somebody from Twitter that sees it, follows the link and somehow participates. But I hope it's somebody who's listening or watching. Okay. All right. So there you go. We're, we're officially underway. In fact, let me have a second here. To, uh, to start off by thanking one of our first sponsors. And I mentioned the Total Tea Clinic. Hey, Vlad Guerrero Jr., <laughs> you're a beast, dude. I mean, 40 home runs in a, uh, in a home run derby like that, but then just running out of gas, you know? And I would say this to you, that if that's how you feel, and maybe you're not 20, you know, maybe, maybe you're 48, 49, 50, 60, maybe you feel like you're running out of gas. Total Tea Clinic, refuel that rascal. Seriously, plug it in, charge it up, and, and watch what happens in your life. Uh, I can remember talking to the guys at the Total Tea Clinic, and um, I can remember talking to Dr. John, who told this great story, that, and he's the guy who runs the Total Tea Clinic. He's like, listen, there was a time where I was depressed in my life. Like, I couldn't feel like, I didn't want to get out of bed, I didn't want to go to work, I just, he was, and the testosterone treatments changed my life. He's like, and I don't want you to go dramatize this and tell people I was out of my mind. No, not at all. I just, I was lethargic. I was out of energy and I was depressed as a result. And the, the testosterone treatments completely changed my life. And I will tell you guys, I'm doing some superhuman stuff right about now that, uh, that I have not done in a long ass time. Compliments <laughs> of the total T clinic. And by the way, I love getting messages from everybody on Facebook. Like, Dude, okay, you got me. I'm going to the Total Tea Clinic. In fact, I just was talking to one of our great friends, longtime great friend, who was telling me on Facebook yesterday, he's like, dude, you sold me. I'm going to the Total Tea Clinic. TotalTeaClinic.com is the website, TotalTeaClinic.com. The Twitter, at Total Tea Clinic, and Instagram, at Total Tea Clinic. Superhuman stuff, huh? I don't want to brag, Alex, but uh, there are some things that I'm doing right now that I was not even capable of doing when I was... When my testosterone levels were the way they were supposed to be, okay, because I was a young man, okay, you know. Now yeah. I'm a now I'm a middle aged man who looks like he's 21, or feels. Yeah, compliments of total. T. I don't know about look, but definitely feels. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me uh, let me do this because we said we, we wanted to try and get in as much content as we could. Yes. Before Bert Grossman gets here, and um, somehow or another, I wanted to start with the home run derby from last night, but I, my brain I don't remember what we were talking about a few minutes ago, but it made me think that I wanted to go right into this story before we even get to the, the home run derby. But on the other hand, now I'm thinking I should wait for Bert. Okay. I don't know what we're talking about, but I wanted to go, I, we prepared today some, some photos that I wanted to share with everybody on the Rams new stadium in LA okay. and the Raiders new stadium in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get to that. And something I must've been talking about a few minutes ago made me think, okay, I'm going to go right into that. I did bring up the Chargers. What did you say? That they always got your hopes up and then they squashed them. That's what it was. Yeah. Okay, that's what it was. So let me start there. Let me do that. I'm going to get to the Home Run Derby because I know that's what a lot of people were talking about. I'm going to get to the Women's U.S. National Soccer Team because they got off the plane. Everybody looked like they were drinking and partying all night right into Good Morning America. I'll talk about that on the way. Now that you're back from your food poisoning, I finally have somebody I can talk to about what happened at the UFC fight this past weekend because yes. everybody's buzzing about this guy in five seconds kneeing the other dude in the head and knocking him out. So I'll it get there. It was more like two, but the ref, you know, it took the ref longer to get there to stop it. My favorite part of that whole story is they, they, they talked to the guy who got knocked out and they said, what about a rematch? And he said, rematch? I don't, 
Did you? I got knocked out in five seconds. I don't yeah. deserve a rematch. No. I actually don't deserve to ever fight again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I want to get to some really funny videos today of Floyd Mayweather actually getting knocked down, finally, maybe even knocked out. And uh, one of the greatest dunks you're ever going to see, especially in a summer league game that probably nobody was really watching. I mean, I, I've heard that going to the summer league is a lot of fun because there's just games back to back to back. I mean, the Lakers tipped off like at 9 p.m. last night. So who knows how liquored up you are by then. But yeah, but watching Summer League? No, no thank you. Not my thing. I just got off the phone five minutes before we came on the air with our colleague Darren Smith. Colleague? Just curious. What do you mean? Do we work together right now? Do we work together right now? Isn't that what a colleague is? I mean, aren't we longtime colleagues? You, me, Darren Smith? Friends? Pals? Pals? Buddies? He called me. He's in Vegas for the summer league. Mm -hmm. Was up there watching games. He sent me a picture last night. Uh, he was sitting behind a LeBron, a couple wearing a LeBron jersey and a Kobe jersey. Oh, well, really? Yeah. yeah. Nice. So yeah, so I was talking to Darren about um, about Vegas and summer league, and and you say it's boring, but there's a, I'll show you this video later of this guy with this dunk. It's I think watching on TV is boring. Being there, it sounds fun. Yeah, for sure. Last year, I went to the summer league games in Sacramento, and I loved it. The Cali Classic. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I had a great time. In fact, I was saying to Darren. I was saying to Darren, wait a second. See, oh didn't my get to anything. God. Me All right, here comes Bert. Here comes Bert. Here comes Bert Grossman. All right, wait a second. Bert, Are you going to try and dress Hi, Bert. him before he walks in? Thank you. Bert's bringing Hi. gifts. Bert's bringing gifts. Let's see what Bert has brought Bert. here today. Hey, Thanks buddy, for wearing a clean shirt, Bert. Sure. Oh, wow, Bert. <laughs> wow. Like yeah, where'd you get this? Oh, somebody must have sent this to you. It didn't fit you, so you gave it to no, me. No, it did fit me. It Was that a, a pit polo shirt? Yeah, it yeah, is. He brought me some back yeah, he did. Yeah. Was cool. Pit polo shirt. That's really nice. I'm gonna rock that. Thanks, Bert. Why didn't you rock that? Why didn't you wear that shirt instead of the shirt that you're one? wearing right look now? Look at it. It looks like I'm an ice cream man. <laughs> <laughs> and then what's this? That's for Linda. She wanted a ball. Linda Welby. Yeah. Linda, thank you for the support. Fan mail and pictures through 113. Oh, through. That's my record. Dude. I know. Jesus God. I know. Look at this. This is a nice football. This is really nice. Very, very nice, Bert. You're a good man. Bert hmm. Grossman's in the house. So, Bert, this is actually perfect timing. Is it? Why? Yeah. I got, what, I got 10 minutes after the long drive? Traffic's starting to build, so you might want to just throw me out. Dude, when I was driving north today, uh, the traffic south was not moving at all. L.A. style. I mean, it was just not moving at all. Anybody notice traffic south coming up? It was it not wasn't, moving at it all. It was not bad at all when oh, me and okay. Allison drove. Uh, okay, good. So something good. must have happened. Good. Hey, so hold up. You know, my, my son broke his uh, hand back in Florida. Mm -hmm. So I took him to the doctor, the orthopedic surgeon. He walks in. First thing he says before he even asks what's wrong with my son. Hey, you're Bert Gross. When's Scott getting back on air? That was his very first question to me. Hold on a second. Let me see if I understand the story you just told. It was your, a tough one. You want to follow along? Your <laughs> son broke his hand in Florida? Yeah, so they had to wait till he got back here to see his his orthopedic. Okay, I missed that part of the story. I thought he was in I Florida. In South Florida. I thought in Florida the doctor. Well, asked you're him, big there. Well, your not... dad's probably spreading the message. And well, that's true too. Okay. Yeah. No, it was here. It was here. So wait, so your son goes to see his orthopedic surgeon. Yeah. Because he got a broken hand. Well, he's an orthopedic doctor, but yeah, it was through Sharp, so he had to wait till he got here, because you know Florida's like Alabama. In like, what way? I'm getting hot? stuff out. Like like it's hot. No, humid? like third world, like that backwards. Why is that? It just is. Okay. You know, you know it is. Don't okay. lie. Okay, got it. So <laughs> so I took him today and I get there at like ten thirty and he walks in and before he asks what's wrong, or anything else, he just looked at me and he goes, You're Bert Grossman, right? And I was like, Yeah, and he goes, When's Scott getting back on air? I can't listen to it on YouTube in my car anymore. How about on tune in in his car? You know, I didn't know all the technical questions. I should have yeah. sorry. I'm you know, sorry. You know what's I'm happening? Sorry. How old would you estimate your doctor is? Uh, mid forties. Is he a white guy or black guy or is he he's Hispanic a white guy. dude, Asian dude? White, white guy. guy. So he's yeah. a white guy in his mid forties. Doctor Vance, yeah. Who's a doctor who wants to get into his car and just turn on the radio, right? Yeah. Like for him, he probably has a car that he can connect his Bluetooth, and he probably takes a phone call and he talks out loud with hands free. But to ask him to put the tune in app and Bluetooth it in his car, too much. That is a chore that he just will not go through. No, he says he goes on YouTube and he faces the screen down. And he doesn't watch. And he just listens to the audio on YouTube. Oh, that's cool. While he's in his car. That's cool. That's very nice of that doctor. Mm -hmm. Very sweet. Didn't it, help me on the copay, but that's cool. How much was the copay? 55 bucks. 55, huh? I know. Gotcha. Okay. Anyway, um, Bert, you come at a great time. Um, yes. As for the answer 
to the question oh, of, of when if you're gonna if you're gonna run around the bases here and not do anything then just don't even start are you gonna give me something well you know i talked about this alex i don't know if you were watching yesterday or not no because you were having <laughs> yeah. you know explosive diarrhea <laughs> whatever it was did you yeah i think for the first time in my life i think i had food poisoning where'd you get it at i don't know somewhere in downtown huh. anyway so um so the, this kid is, is stuck at a toilet yesterday, right? And, um, and so I spoke about this yesterday, Bert, for at least 20 minutes. About him in the toilet? No, about me oh. and, and 1090 and what's going on with 1090. I, I, can you give me a recap? Well, I just need well, the cliff notes. Give me whatever you want to know. I'll tell you anything. I'm an open book. And then, by the way, I've got something. I, your, your timing is perfect. All right. You, are, is it going forward? Has it gone anywhere since two weeks ago when I was here when you said it would be done in two weeks? I'll give you the brief synopsis. You ready? Mm. Uh, a month ago, literally one month ago from where we are today, I went to Monterey, Mexico. I developed a relationship with the Pachara family, as you know. Mm -hmm. We've been in communication ever since. Uh, about 10 days ago, the older brother, Bernardo Bachara, was here in San Diego, and we had a nice dinner. We had a great time. We spent three hours together laughing and talking and having a great time, becoming friendlier. Mm -hmm. um, and at the very end, you know, B Bernardo said, we're pulling for you. My family wants to work with you, and we think you're the right guy, and we're pulling for you. Please get us a proposal. This was on a Thursday, on a Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. Bernardo sent me an email saying we had a great time. Let's hustle up, you know, because we want to make a, deci a decision as a family by Friday, July 12th. That's this Friday. I told them that I would immediately get them a proposal. This was on a Saturday. I said, by Monday, you'll have the proposal. Monday, I sent my proposal to them. Is to it a strong proposal? I thought, I thought it was a... I thought thought was, past tense, meaning they didn't like it? That's right. No. So, that's exactly right. So, so what happened is Monday, I sent the proposal. Tuesday, they said, can we see more? Can we see how you derived these numbers? Mm -hmm. um, I was in New York with my son. Thursday, when I came back, 4th of July, I sent them very, very detailed information. Okay. And then on Monday, as in yesterday, they sent me an email and said, we don't like your proposal. Mm -hmm. But what they added was, but let us show you how we see this going forward. Have you gotten hers yet? I have not. Is there room in your proposal? Do you have a little more change to throw on the table? Up to Annie? Um, I, my answer is, I do think that based on the work that we did when we were in Monterey, Mexico, versus the work that I did over the last few weeks, I don't think we're that far off. Mm -hmm. I really don't think we're that far off. And so um, by moving the equipment from the 1090 studios and putting it into a storage unit, and then um, by saying we're leaving that 14,000 square feet of space and leaving that $33,000 rent payment behind. I do think that by moving into a much smaller space and, and having rent that's reasonable. Oh, absolutely. Then, then perhaps we can find a, a middle ground. Cause really all I want to know from them is what is it you want to do here? What is it you need to make? And then we'll find a way to make it happen for you because we got too many good people that are waiting over here to get back on the air. Well, that's good that he asked, said, here's what we want to do. So he just don't comes you think? Yeah, as long as you have room to come in the middle. That's that's the goal. Is is I gave mine, he's giving his. Let's did you all give him come the low together. ball or did you give him your final? No, I thought I gave a very reasonable I didn't want to be insulting offer? in any way. No. You? Were you oh. expecting a yes from No. Yeah. No, I was not so expecting you, a yes. So you got right what you expected. Yeah, I got what yeah, that's hey, normal let, business. Let yeah, let's, grab the first thing. Let us show you what we think. Hmm. Great. Let's let's do it. So you, to answer your question, I think we are progressing and moving forward. Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. And what was the perfect timing? Here? Okay, perfect timing. Burt Grossman is here. Uh, Burt Grossman, the former Charger, first round draft choice. Burt, do you know that yesterday, Billy Ray sent Alex and I, by text, uh, an invitation that he had received from the San Diego Chargers of Carson. Mm -hmm. And the Charger organization said, hey, here's the date. I don't remember what it is, August something. Um, it's alumni day at Chargers training camp at their mm -hmm. practice facility. Have you received the same invitation? No. <laughs> no I don't think Let me so. get this straight. As a former first round draft choice of the Chargers, as the all time sack leader for white defensive ends, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you have not received an invitation to the Charger Alumni Day during training camp. No. Do you want to see the invitation? So, no, I, I've got them before. I just stopped getting them about two years ago. Ever since I started coming on there with you. Thank you. I appreciate that. But <laughs> I wouldn't go up there anyway. It doesn't matter. But I didn't go to them when they were here. Wait, I've never you... gone to an alumni game in 20-some years. I've never gone 
to Love Nine Day Camp in 20 some years. Wait, are you considering going with considering Billy Ray? it? Well, oh, considering Whoa. it because you sent me the, the invite saying that I was invited. Yeah. But you didn't say, hey, you want to go? Oh, no, no, no. Here's the deal. So Billy Ray sends an invitation yesterday. Chargers training camp. Do you know the date? It, it's, it's I'm telling you, it's like August, whatever it is. Maybe it's late July. August 4th. Okay, August 4th. August 4th. Don't, you don't fall for that trap. Okay, you, you, first of all, Billy Ray can't remember yesterday or what, what the 4th of July was. He doesn't know all the bad things you've said. It's out of his mind by now. He'll show up there. They'll ban him like they banned me, and it's all because of you. You should have looked out for him. Okay, now hold on a second. So Billy Ray sends me an invitation and Alex an invitation, and he says, look, guys, it's Charger Alumni Day. It's August 4th. It's at their training facility. They say I'm invited, Billy Ray, and I'm allowed to invite two guests. Now, I, that's an odd thing to me, to invite a player with two guests. No, they always do that. But why two? I don't know why. Who are you going to bring? Your mother and your father? You know, you're going to bring your wife and your girlfriend? Well, I think you can ask for more, but it's kind of like kids. I, mean, I don't know. That's, I mean, I that is know, a weird one. It I don't know if they be. thought that Billy Ray was bringing his wife and his kid. Yeah, probably. Are you going to get like? Are you going to get him disinvited right now? Is that so, what we're going? No, no. So here's the deal. No, so he will after this one. That's though. what I'm saying. So, yeah. so, so Billy Ray says to me and Alex, I get to go to the Charger Alumni Day. Would you two gentlemen like to be my guests? AKA and, drive me. And I write back, you're freaking, you're freaking a right. I'm going. I'll go. I'll go in a heartbeat. Could you imagine me and Billy Ray and Alex mm -hmm. come walking in to Charger training camp, right? And there's Dean. You know, and there's John, and there's AG, and here comes me and Billy Ray and Alex. And Billy Ray has got, like, this glow around him, like like a halo around his head, right? And, like, me and Alex come walking up, and we're like flames, like <laughs> like fire, like little devils well, on either side of Billy Ray, you know? If you wore your old Kaplan jersey from that one preseason game, that would, that would do you still have that? I don't know, I'll find it somewhere. What about wearing, like, your old, the media combine thing you invented with Bill Johnston? That shirt. Wow. Remember the good old days. Yeah, Charger Media Combine. Yeah. Do you really, you you do know that Billy Ray does not know any of the history between you and the Chargers because he's forgot it all and you're going to get him in trouble. So this is my big concern, obviously. Does Billy Ray RS have to RSVP with names of guests or just does he just show up? I think it's just number of guests. Yeah, I don't think he needs to put in anybody's name. So, But this is the point. Bert's actually onto it, which is if I show up with Billy Ray, okay, um, and Dean... If I walk up to Dean and I'm like, Dino, my man, let's take a pick. You know, like if, if, if I That'd walk up great. to Dean, how, hey, 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 AG, Johnny. I don't think they'll take a come picture. Come over here. Man. Come over here. Let's take a picture together. And I'm taking a picture. I got the whole Spanos clan around me. And I got a big, stupid smile on my face. With the smile says to everybody like, oh, my God, look how uncomfortable the Spanos are. Billy Ray is banned for life oh, after yeah. this. I actually think. You'll drive him up there when you get there. They'll spot you, kick you out. I don't know what they'll kick Alex out. No, nah, they won't. They don't know me. All right, and then Billy Ray won't have a ride home. Either way, you're gonna get him in trouble that way. You I mean, need you to could look wait out for him, for him a little you bit. Can you wait can't wait for him outside. Even if he brings you and he gets kicked, you're gonna get kicked out. At worst case, he's never gonna get invited again. Do you think you want to do that to do him? Do you think they would kick you out? Yeah, like Boltman. I don't think they would kick you out. I think because they would. I think that they know that you would come back on whatever platform you're on and just smash them worse than he already has could it get any worse what's so bad what did i do yeah what did he do wow he didn't pay for the planes oh no you just don king didn't put up any of the fights but he did dude let me tell you something right now when we get this radio station back on the air i this football season want to do those planes over every charger game and i want them each week to say things like kaplan's back are you pissed dean or darren smith's back on the air you know, just just every week a promotional flyover. I know she didn't mention me anywhere in that line. Bert Grossman is on ten ninety every Bluetooth. Tuesday. Not sure what time. Bluetooth. You know what I saw on you Twitter? Want Bluetooth back? No, we were talking about uh, OJ. He did a Bluetooth thing. Get out of here! I it's on his Twitter. OJ Simpson has a Bluetooth. He tweeted ad. something about Bluetooth. Yeah. I'll see if Emwell can find that. Emwell, can you see if you can find OJ? It was about Simpson? two weeks ago. He doesn't tweet that much. He actually tweeted it. And did he mention Blue Chew in the tweet? Yeah, it was like at Blue Chew or hashtag Blue Chew. And I'm like, this, look what they're doing to me. Well, the thing I can't figure out is who's having sex with OJ? I don't know. A lot of people. Know, prostitutes, but. Really? Yeah. You ever watch the, uh, that documentary that just came out, the Ted Bundy tapes or the, the Ted Bundy movie? I haven't seen it. How, and, then, and a lot of it was how women were attracted to Ted Bundy. Afterwards, yeah. After, yeah. 
Oh, really? Like when like, he was in jail? Yeah, people. Yeah, like, like married, some naked weird, photos, everything. There's some weird thing about women being attracted, or just people being attracted to that, like murder. Like Charles Manson had his following. We all have sure, our own fetishes Simpson now. Come on, thing. right? That's yeah. a weird fetish, though. It's a very weird fetish. It to is have. weird. It is weird. It's a weird fantasy. Today's to uh, have. OJ Simpson's birthday, by the way. Juice. He said. Cel- he tweeted, "Celebrating my 33rd annual 39th birthday." Hmm. I don't know what that means. It means he's 72. That means he says he's 39 every year when people ask. Right, and he's been doing it for 33 years, which yeah. means... Hey, can you turn this up? Oh, I, I, I will watch all OJ videos. Material, me too. Yeah, I will watch it, but you're probably going to have to close it and then reopen it so we can hear it from the beginning. See, this is what Bert does. I knew this was going to happen. what I'm talking about. Hey, Twitter world, this is yours truly. I hate that, yours truly. You know, it's hard for me to believe that today I'm celebrating my 33rd annual 39th birthday. <laughs> And I got to tell you, it's been quite a ride. They said every life some rain must fall. Well, huh. I've had some hurricanes descend in my life, but I thank the Lord because through it all, he's kept me relatively healthy and in good spirits and positive. And that's tough to do today with all the haters on the Internet and on cable TV uh, spouting their negative opinions on just about everything. You know, I like what it, uh, Plato or was it Socrates who said, about opinions that they are not fact, that at the most they could be a possibility and maybe even a probability. But the facts are they're not fact. I like the old saying that what opinions are like armpits, everybody got them. And I would have hit him in the head with the ball by now. Stink. Play through. You know, a lot of good things have happened in my 39 years. The other day I was with my boys. Oh my God, uh, this doesn't uh, stop. Okay, I can't take it anymore. Long, okay, stop. I can't take it anymore. You know, I just thought of something watching right. that because my mind wanders all the time. You think, is he 30, was he 39 when he killed Nicole and Ron Goldman? No, that wasn't 33 years ago. It wasn't? Nope. It was about 25 years ago. In fact, yeah, we just celebrated the 25 anniversary, 25 year anniversary. Oh, is that you an anniversary? I don't, know about a celebration. <laughs> I don't know about a celebration. I don't know about a celebration. Pinata, I mean, would you have? I don't know. I mean, yeah. Birthday cake. <laughs> I mean, like, hey, we're celebrating. It was 25 years ago. OJ <laughs> and the chase. It's like, no, there were two people that were actually murdered. Yeah. Mm. So, Bert, I mentioned earlier that you got here at perfect timing, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. But first, Wait, before are we just I done do, with the Spanos thing? Well, like, no. No, not at all. Okay. I'm, I'm just telling you, don't no. take him. You'll regret it. Okay. No, you won't because you're selfish, but he'll regret it. There, I agree with you that Billy if Kim. If Billy Ray said, "How about Scott and Alex?" That's because Kim mentioned, "How about Scott and Alex?" So I think no. if she's on board, he's on. Oh, board. there's no doubt about it that Kimberly was like, "Why don't you invite Scott and Alex?" Hundred do percent. She doesn't because watch of this her right show. here. Because of this right here, Bert. Because uh, there's me. There it is. Look that at that. Is me. This is the day that he said he's leaving. Right? And, right. That is me. That is Dean Spanos. And Dean Spanos, his hand gesture is saying, "What do you want me to do?" I mean, if, if, if there would have been over 50% of the vote, I would have stayed and fought and taken it to the Supreme Court. But instead, I'm leaning towards moving to L.A. And I heard that and I went, are you, you're, you're talking past tense. You've already made up your mind. And that's, that's when, that day is when we, we put that report on CBS television. The Chargers were playing the Raiders. And little did we know that that was probably, what, 16, 2016? Mm-hmm. And now here we are in 2019. And I mentioned, Bert, that your timing is perfect. Let me show you why. You know, I've been talking to a lot of friends that were in Vegas over the weekend that felt the earthquake. Did you Mm -hmm. feel the earthquake on Saturday? Where were you? Friday. Friday? Are you sure? No, no. Saturday was the one that was the one that we felt here, no? Friday night. I think there was two, right? Yeah, there was two. There's 7.1 was Saturday, wasn't it? Dude, I think your diarrhea has impacted your brain power. it was Friday night. Maybe his diarrhea was the second earthquake. No, no, no. I think think there was Friday night and then there was Saturday night. There was a 6.5 and a 7.1. Oh, okay. You didn't know like about a day or two apart. You didn't know about the Saturday earthquake? I, I think your guys' timing is wrong, but keep going. Okay, hold on a second. Is there anybody that wants to help us out here? And it could be, as far as I'm concerned, it can be through the YouTube comments. Or I'm going to open the phones. Mm. 760-412-5818. 760-412-5818. You know what we need? We need like a sign, of like a lower third graphic that actually puts up the phone number in case anybody ever wants to call in. So, okay. What's up, Bert? I was just saying, good idea. Okay, thank you. So, let me let me just tell you about. Are you looking on my was shorts? Friday seven point one quake the big one? No. Yes. Saturday. Friday night. No. Just sitting on my home. Saturday I was sitting night. Sitting at my house with some buddies playing. Six FIFA. five was before seven one. Correct? Saturday night, right. dude. I was six sitting in a restaurant. Was, six five was like before. Like Friday. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, seven one was on Friday. See, I think one was on Saturday. One was on Sunday. I'm telling you that there was a there was. A, 
Listen, unless my days are all wrong because it was the 4th of July. Oh, no, you're here. right. That's what it here. was. Here, my mom texts me freaking out after every, each the one. The 4th was one day, and I took that as Saturday because I wasn't working. Which oh, I maybe did. right. Maybe it was yeah. Friday, and maybe I thought it was Saturday because it was uh, the day after the 4th of July. Thursday and Friday. Oh, Thursday, Friday. Oh, what a surprise. Alex right again. Well, Alex whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. You weren't right. You said they weren't a day apart. I said apart. it was Friday. That's all I said was the Friday. Yeah, but with the holiday, Friday. we didn't. By the way, I was it. right, too. Even though I said Saturday, I meant Sat- I meant, I meant the day that felt like Saturday. Plus, we're American, and you're not. I was what do you born mean he's not here. American. He's Mexican. He's Mexican American. It's not Mexican you don't celebrate heritage. the holiday with the same veracity as we do. Oh really? I yeah. was with him on Fourth of July. He seemed to celebrate it just fine. You were at Linda's though. Yeah, how about you? No, I was elsewhere. I, went I know. To Linda's I know. too. I was elsewhere. Was it at her house? Yeah, it was at her house. Did you right. get drunk? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice. Yes. Yes, we did. We did get drunk. Because I brought a bottle of uh actually I didn't, but my my, my friend brought a bottle. What kind of, of friend? Uh, male or female? Female. Hmm. Do I know her? You don't. You sure? Not positive. She brought a bottle of Don Julio. Oh. I, was at, I was at this party about two minutes before Scott's like, shots? And I'm like, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's do it. It's 4th of July. Okay. I mentioned Burt came at perfect timing. And I haven't, <laughs> for 20 times. minutes, I haven't been able to get to why this is. Vegas, friends, okay. so, earthquakes. So, so bottom line is this with the, with the whole thing with Billy Ray and the Charger thing. Is, is that if Billy Ray and Kimberly think it's appropriate for me and Alex to go with Billy Ray to Charger Alumni Day at training camp, I will go. I am the bigger man than Dean and John and AG. I'm the bigger man. I'll show up at Charger training camp. Wait, if you're going to go there and kiss ass, don't Oh, go. no, no kiss ass. All right. No kiss ass. Because that, what, why is it, all right, so again, you have to go with some kind of motive because Billy Ray goes because he kisses ass. Hank Bauer goes because he kisses ass. Everybody that goes there goes because they kiss ass. So if you're not going to kiss ass, what are you going for? I'm going to kick ass. Oh, kick. That's what I'm going How long were you waiting to say that? None kiss. I'm going to kick some freaking ace. And how, tell me what that looks like. I don't know what it looks like. I haven't figured it out. (laughs) You're shaking hands and eat the hot dog. I just know that Scott loves the awkwardness. Like he oh, I know. To, yeah, he, he lives wants for that. to walk. He wants to walk into the, whatever the hell they practice. <laughs> Everybody else like, avoids that, and he and wants then, to yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm in the house. What, what are you gonna do? Right, you guys kicking me out? I'm with Billy Ray. I'm safe. Wow. Yeah. So, so I mentioned again. You're just per- a Jewish LT, basically. You sell out. I'm like a Jewish Ladanian Tomlinson. Yeah, pretty much. The second they offer it, and you see an opening, and an you, invitation, you run right you up know the freeway. You know what you should do? Huh. And this, I'm not even kidding. You get the Charger Hater Club card mm-hmm. printed on a T-shirt, oh, hell and to you the wear yeah. the T-shirt. Hell to the yeah! All right, if you do that, yeah. and then you <laughs> get a bunch, uh, you get a bunch ass. printed up and, and hand just, them out, yeah. then that's okay. And then just get, let me take pictures. How about and this? If we get kicked out, we get kicked out. How about this? I get, I go to give Dean a, a Charger Hater Club card. I'm like, Dean, here, sign it, so I can, so I can tweet it. And he doesn't even know what it is because yeah. he doesn't read. You know, I'm just be a guest. I like that one. So the interesting thing about this whole conversation about Chargers and about you know, alumni day. I really don't have any interest in going and I would never go. I would never step premises. I would never step a foot on their premises, of course. But isn't it interesting that all these years later, um, as we look at the aftermath of what happened, you know, that picture that you guys put up 2016 when Dean is standing on the field and he's, he's kind of telling me that, that he's made his, that he's leaning towards moving to LA. Since that time, think about what's happened here. Chargers have left. Rams have arrived in LA and have already played in a Super Bowl. Raiders still play in Oakland, but for the final year upcoming. I thought I was at the last Raider game, which was Raiders Broncos Christmas this past football season. I thought that was the last game ever in Oakland. Turns out I'm already doing Monday night football between the Chargers and, or excuse me, the Broncos and the Raiders on Monday night opening weekend. So we're back to Oakland. We're going right back into that stadium. Have you seen. Be, and it was reported this way that the earthquake on Saturday, Friday, whatever. The big one was Saturday. Yeah. The earthquake was, was felt in <laughs> Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the story was that the Raiders' new stadium collapsed. No, no. Oh. Was not damaged in any way. Now, you say, well, what, what new stadium? Let me show you. Hey, hey, I'm well. Can you pull up the pictures, please? from the Raiders' new stadium in Las Vegas. And this is, there was a lot of, there were news reports about, okay, look, so they're in the process of building this thing. There's like trucks and cranes and scaffolding and men in hard hats and welding and all kinds of stuff going on. You can see welding from there? 
I can't, but I'm just telling you that oh. that's what's happening because I'm a guy who understands construction, you see. I, I do, I do, yeah. absolutely. Bert, look at this. You got Mandalay Bay, right? You got what used to be called The Hotel. I mean, and I mean that is Mandalay, right? So if is I wanted to go to a game. The Delano now? It's Delano. Delano. Yeah, and then next to it, you see the pyramid. I don't remember what that's called. Luxor. Luxor, right. So, dude, that is where the Raiders' new stadium is. Now, again, you think about, and I just I just started thinking about it because people were saying that this wasn't damaged. Guys, we have another picture of, of the Raiders' stadium, another angle. Dude, that's happening, Bert. Yeah. In in 2000, call it 15 or whatever, that first go around where the Chargers and, and the Raiders are talking about going to Carson together, and then another season goes by where there's one more chance to save the Chargers in town, but the Raiders wind up going to Vegas. Dude, that's happening. What we're looking at right now is no longer theoretical. It's not in Alex's coffee table book of renderings. Yeah. Dude, that shit is happening. Isn't that insane that they literally just... Got that exact same stadium from Carson. We're like, yeah, we're going to build that one in Vegas. Yeah, move it over. Yeah. I ours. think they plan on going there the whole time. I think Mark Davis is a little smarter than we thought. The other crazy thing is, so when the Chargers end up moving to Inglewood and mm -hmm. you have the Rams there, I mean, I'm not a Raiders fan, but there's only so many football dollars for attendance you can get. I would much rather go on a weekend to Vegas to watch a football game and be in Vegas than drive three hours, four hours in traffic to Inglewood and then back. I mean, what's there? I agree. I think I, it's going to hurt them worse. I agree. I think I think that if you had an opportunity and you said, I'm going to drive from San Diego to Englewood. Pay and, $100 park and then drive back. Right. I mean, or I'm going to drive to Vegas. Or I'm going to fly for $50. Or enjoy the weekend and I'm going to spend my money going to a Raider game in, in their brand new stadium. So all this has happened. It went from... They may move to L.A. and they may partner with the Raiders to know the Chargers and the Raiders are out, the Rams are in, to the Chargers now have to go kiss ass to the Rams and the Raiders get their own stadium in Vegas. And again, the picture tells you the story. It's actually happening. It's not like here in San Diego where for 15 years we argued over environmental impact reports or, yeah. or which politicians should be paying or which owners should be you know, putting money. Do you have a live shot of that San Diego State? stadium i don't have one of those yet oh all right i don't have one that's been about a year go Just to the go to the photo though of the rams <laughs> new stadium <laughs> i totally forgot that they're building a stadium i know yeah right? well you got well, it's, that's, that's what they say up there yeah shovels dude, in the ground dude look at this i mean this is the rams new stadium which many people believe from it the is. aerial shot like this that the stadium was constructed artistically to emulate the rams helmet logo oh absolutely is so I think that, you know, it, it's ultimately when they get this roof on it, it'll probably have the Ram horn and it's going to mm -hmm. look like the Rams logo. This is it. it, it it's got to blow your mind a little bit that the team has taken off. They're gone. And these two stadiums, they are being built. I mean, that, that's really happening. This we, one opens next year. We could never get anything done in this town. And now... LA is getting a stadium and has two NFL football teams. Vegas is getting an NFL football team and a brand new stadium. And we're sitting here holding our Johnsons going, should I become a Charger fan again? Or, hey, should I be a Rams fan? Or, hey, maybe I should spend my money on the Raiders. Or, hey, I don't like the NFL anymore. That stuff is actually, from the start of that story to where we are today, that stuff's really happening. It's kind of a mind blow. And the Raiders, just from the casinos for... Guests and everything else will sell out everyone. You know, the casinos will buy blocks. Still, every game will be sold out. That is going to be ugly when that gets big and filled and giant and you have the empty seats. I mean, that flies in baseball on TV because people are used to it, but the NFL is not used to those shots of empty seats. And if you have empty seats in a 25,000-seat stadium when they're really good, the team, what's it going to be like when Phillip Rivers is gone and you have 70,000, 80,000 to fill? I mean, it's going to be terrible. You mentioned, with a competing team. You mentioned San Diego State building a stadium, and you say you forgot that they're even doing that? Yeah, I just forgot. I mean, those two stadiums in Las Vegas and in L.A., they're being built. They'll I mean, be built before San Diego State breaks ground. Well, that's just it. So, so again, if we couldn't do it here, and that stuff's actually really happening, is San Diego State really going to be able to get this done? Because I'll tell you this, that's how they recruit football now. I mean, they go out to these kids and like, hey, you'll be playing in a brand new football stadium in just a couple of years. As long as you get redshirted six times. Petco. <laughs> Not Petco. <laughs> oh, that's new. All right, Bert Grossman <laughs> is here on his regular Tuesday appearance. It's Scott and BR from the Callaway headquarters. Let me send a shout out to one of our excellent partners. In fact, Primus Family Law Group, I'm having a meeting tomorrow 
with Bonnie Mantell okay. down in her office and her husband Barry Mantell because tomorrow is it, I'm sure we'll talk. See, I don't go like that. What do you mean? My divorce lawyer has to be divorced. You don't like the fact that Bonnie's so happily married. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. I think a coach has to have played at one time. Granted, Belichick didn't play, but st- all right, maybe that's the point. All right, go ahead, continue. So <laughs> I understand what you're saying because I see Bonnie Mantell and her husband Barry Mantell, and I see them all over Facebook, and they couldn't be happier. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's one of those things where, like, when you're divorced, you look at people that are happy and in love and 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 married, and and they're like, "My husband's so freaking awesome. He's so hot and he's so cool." Repost if you got the best husband in the world. Right, and I'm like. No one ever was saying that, that when I was yeah, married. I didn't right. Post. Right. Like there was never a Facebook post like I want to say happy birthday to my husband, the light of my life, the father of my children, the man of my dreams, my everything. Who I love takes you, baby. care of all of us. Like there was never a post about me. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't got my girlfriend. I've been going out for seven months. I don't have one either. I get a text, you know, but I don't. I don't get that public stuff. No. Well, listen. Um, when you see. Bonnie Mantell on Facebook and, mm-hmm. and, and she's, all, question her. she's all lovey-dovey mm-hmm. with Barry Mantell on Facebook and they're a very cute couple. They're very adorable, these two, right? Um, you say to yourself, I want to emulate what they got mm-hmm. and I'm unhappily married right now and it's not getting better and I got to get out of this mess. Prime I'm going to find me a Barry. Yeah, I need to get out there and get me a Barry. Or a Bonnie. Or a Bonnie. Right. 619-574-8000. 619-574-8000. Primus Family Law Group is the website. PrimusFamilyLawGroup.com. Like I said, I'll be down there visiting with these guys tomorrow. I really appreciate their... What are you visiting about? Well, you know, Bert, the thing is... Don't is say that... you're not done yet. Please. You are worse than a stadium in San Diego. Your, your divorce has been going on for seven years now. I am officially divorced. You know? Oh, okay. All right. Well, but, I, of course, I as I was warned during the divorce... You're not going to be done when the divorce is over. You're going to have to still deal with a lot of crazy stuff. And that's what I'm dealing with. Hmm. But Bonnie says to me, she goes, you go to work and you do your thing. But the thing about tomorrow's meeting is it's like I just got done today with Corky Miser from Corky's Pest Control. I've got to constantly be. Oh, it's a business meeting. Yes. Oh, I thought it was a divorce one. I don't know. It's about about Bonnie and it's about partnership with us and about these ads here. Well, you have to to tell me that. You know I'm slow. I understand. All right. um, Thank you, Bonnie Mantell. Thank you, Bonnie Mantell. Hmm. What are you saying, Emwell? Okay, I'm gonna, I have a bunch of content I want to get to. I'm going to talk about a bunch of stuff. Women's U.S. national team, talking about it. Home run derby, getting there. Uh, UFC, five-second knockout, all coming up. We're not going to let Bert distract us from all this excellent content we've created. Oh, I, I agree. And we're going to get Bert's opinion on all this stuff. That's how you get distracted. But I'm being told that there's a phone <laughs> call coming in. 760-412-5818 is the phone number. 760- we're taking calls now? I, I'm, listen. He's stepping it up. Sometimes you got to question whether or not there's anybody out there on the other end. You understand what I'm saying? Well, they're just YouTube comments. That's kind of... I love the YouTube there. comments. I do. I love the YouTube comments. Uh, Mikey Hernandez, Mikey, the number one caller on the Scott and BR show, is checking in today. Hello, Mikey. Scotty, how you doing? What's up, my man? Not too much, man. I see Bert is in there. Yeah. Good to see him. Thanks. Mm, looks good, right? I mean, he's got his V-neck T-shirt pulled down to his chest. He got his yeah. camouflage shorts on, where we can see up his shorts yeah. on camera. Fresh out of, fresh out of the tanning booth, too. Yeah, looking sweet, Bert. There you go. Yeah, looking there money. You, go. you got to know how to do it. Hey, what do you, uh, so, what do you have uh, in your pockets that you're trying to get? I'm curious. I was looking for chapstick, but I can't find chapstick, it. huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, Mikey. What's going what on? What's going on? Number one caller, pocket. Mikey. How are you, buddy? Oh, I can tell you what Bert's trying to touch in his pocket, but you can't is it? find it. So. <laughs> oh, you can't find it. I can't? Anyway, it's, it's like two BBs in a matchbox, right, Bert? What? It's like two BBs in a matchbox, right, Bert? <laughs> exactly. There you go. Bert just took out his <laughs> ball of lip balm. <laughs> you know what I love about the show now is the cameras catch everything. Yesterday, and I didn't notice this, I know, I but like I was that. showing somebody today. I was like, here, check out our video, on our, check out our show yesterday from YouTube. Billy Ray has no sense of the cameras being in here. Billy Ray's in here, and he goes just like this. And, and, and for those of you that are on tune in, you won't see it, but you know like when somebody tries to sneak a whiff of their armpit? It's like, is it me? Oh, Do I stink? Oh, Billy Ray has a full-on, not even realizing cameras were on. Billy Ray's like, oh, that's great. Oh, that's terrific. God damn it, I smell good, you know? And so, anyway, uh, I just like when... Like earlier today, Bert smacked himself in the face with the microphone. I did. Didn't think anybody saw it, but everybody saw it, Mm -hmm. and it was funny. I picked my nose earlier, too. Yeah, that's cool. Mikey, what's going on, Mike? What can we do for you, pal? Hey, so I just heard you guys talking about the the San Diego State Stadium deal. Dude, it's a joke. What is? Uh, The voters voters messed up. They They don't even have a deal 
to uh, to buy the land yet. They're negotiating with our with our bright, uh, intelligent city council. They can't get anything done. See, that was what the plan was. It was 15 pages long. It was a joke. All it was is to get negotiating rights to buy the land, and they can't even do that. So for all these this news coming out that they have a construction company or developer or what, dude, none of that matters. That's all show because they can't get it done, and it's never going to get done. I, I agree. I mean, what has the city council really done? They've they banned straws, and they've quadrupled the homeless population. They eradicated the yeah. hepatitis, though, right? They got that going, and oh, they named a street yeah, after. Remember uh, they? Yeah. It out. yeah, yeah. They don't they, do they much. They all the streets downtown, apparently. <laughs> yeah, and then let them all back in. I mean, they don't yeah. really get much done down there. Mm-hmm. No, they so, don't. So you're they don't. It's all Mike, politics, and it's, you know everybody's in bed with each other down there. Mike, you're predicting that San Diego State does not get this football stadium built. Oh, Scott, come on! It's not even going to happen. And I can't wait for all the Twitter trolls from San Diego State to come at me on on Twitter. It'll be great because it's never going to get done. It's a joke. All you have to do is look at the plans: the, the Soccer City plan versus the San Diego State West plan. The San Diego State West plan was 15 pages long. The Soccer City one was over 2,000 pages. You mean to tell me that, that all the talk of, of wait all the talk of like the Raiders Stadium in Vegas and the Rams Stadium in LA and the fact that we didn't get anything done here and Burt's little throwaway comment about San Diego State that has got you fired up today, Mikey? Dude, yeah. Well, the whole San Diego State thing has me fired up all the time because it's a joke. I mean, I live on I live on Friars Road down the street from the stadium. I grew up down, you know, over, over by the stadium. I have to look at that eyesore driving past it all the time, and nothing's getting done. And I don't know if it's because our city leaders suck, because that's true. The mayor sucks. He's a mouth-breathing piece of trash. Wow. wow. The rest of the city, the, the rest of the, yeah, have you ever heard that guy talk? Uh, uh, my name's Mayor Faulkner. Uh, 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 vote for me for uh, senator or... <laughs> Governor, yeah, go the hell away. You know, sometimes anyway. when I when my nose is stuffed and I need to breathe out of my mouth, which I prefer my nose, but like this morning I could hear like a little whistle booger in my nose, you know, I like, and I too. hate that. Like it's annoying. Yeah. You hear it or feel I, it? No, I could hear yeah, it but, and then I could feel it. So then I'm picking my nose, you know, and I'm trying to get it out and I'm not successful. And then I start to breathe out of my mouth and I'm sleeping in bed by myself. And I'm like, oh, my mouth the wor- And then you go to a meeting and you chuckle yeah, but- and it shoots out and hits somebody in the arm. <laughs> and you're like, oh, right now, that's Sorry. perfect timing. I'm a mouth breather. Like, Wait, why, so I got why a question. Such an insult? You're, you're not a mouth breather. You're not a mouth breather. One thing. He's a mouth breather because he does that all the time. If, mm. if Soccer City had won, it was November, right? That they had to vote? Soccer if they had City- won, do you think they'd, they'd probably be starting right now? Uh, that would have been under construction already because exactly. they had a deal in in the plan. There was a deal to buy the land. They already had a number. They basically had a check written out, ready to go. And okay, you'd be so showing a render. You'd be bought. showing a stadium right now. All right, Mikey. Yeah. I can't. I'm having a hard yeah. time believing though that that on a on a day like today, where we haven't spoken to you in quite some time, that that this is is this what prompted the call today? No, I was uh, last night. I was watching your show. At my at my leisure because I love it. I love how it's on YouTube. I can watch it whenever I want to, and uh, I was fired up about your comments about the All Star Game and the Padres being excluded from all the festivities. And that you know, yes, you're right. In the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal. Who cares, right? But for me, right now, I've been hungry for 20 years for something exciting to happen with this damn team, and I want it to be recognized because they finally have it right. Not only are they good but they're entertaining. See, and that's the difference between what happened, that, that whole mess when we backed into the playoffs about 10 years ago. Right, remember, they were actually, joke. they they were mediocre, and they were unentertaining. And they still made yeah. it to the playoffs, but they were right. really not that good, and they were really, really boring. I think you're so right. right. I will say this. Even for someone like myself, who football is my primary sport, and baseball's way, sure. way, way back, um, yeah. I'm more interested in the Padres at this time of the year than I have been in many years. And the you know we, we put up this question earlier, Mike. In fact, Emwell, you could pull it up on the full screen here. Mikey, are you a golfer? Uh, I do golf from time to time. I like I ran out of all my Scott and BR balls. I liked hitting you right in the face when I was driving off the tee. I understand. I understand. Did you say you like yeah. your balls getting off yeah. his face? He, he, no, wow. he liked hitting my face. 
Oh, on got the it. balls. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Right, hey, not Billy Ray, because Billy Ray would, would wreck me. Mike, we're putting up a question on Sided right now. I don't know if you're watching or you'll watch later on YouTube. With the second half of the Major League Baseball season upon us, will the Padres finish the 2019 season above 500? And Mike, tomorrow at 4 p.m., we're going to announce the winner of this debate. The winner gets the $1,000 prize package to play in the second Ooh. annual Chelsea's Light Foundation Golf Tournament. And well, nice. so, yeah, it's a it's it's a foursome of golf. Um, it is uh, it's a poker tournament. It's a beer garden. It's a chance to win great prizes, support a phenomenal organization, and we'll even throw in some Callaway golf balls if we can figure out how to do that. But Mike, you should go to sided.co and get in on this debate. Will the Padres finish above five hundred? What do you say, Mike? Bring it you back know, in. I will say this: it's it's going to come down to September, and it's going to look. They're a streaky team. They're a young team, and and they're you know, perfect example is. They lose, you know, what was it, three out of four to the to the Giants, and then they turn around and win three out of four in Dodger Stadium. They're unpredictable, and that's why I'm saying it's going to end on a hot streak or a cold streak, and that's really where it's going to be. But they'll be right around 500. What do you say, Alex? Sure. Alex, will yeah. the Padres finish above or below 500? They're going to finish below but close to 500. And the only reason I say that is because of the pitching. It's totally inconsistent. The bullpen's a mess. Yep. Most of these starters oh. are already on innings limits. So when they run out of yep. innings, then who's going to come up and pitch? It's yep. just uh, oh. well, there's it's, too many it's questions on pitching. Because Andy Green. Oh, you have a problem with Andy, Andy Green? Oh, Andy Green is the biggest turd in all of baseball. Okay. Oh, my God. First of all, let's start out with the little man syndrome. It's absolutely ridiculous. The guy puffs out his chest and makes his voice deep and throws players under the bus. The guy's a punk. Not only that, He's created this situation with babying all these pitchers. Now, I get it, but come on. There was, there was a couple of starts where it was like Lucchese had 70 pitches. He was going into the seventh inning or eighth inning, and he pulled them. It's like, what are, you, what are you doing, man? Because what he does then is he tires out the bullpen, and then it screws us later on when these young kids have bad starts, and we don't have any bullpen pitchers. This is an Andy Green-created problem. The guy, couldn't, the guy couldn't manage a Little League team. He's terrible. Wow. Wow. Mike wow. wants Andy Green fired. I mean, I think he could coach a yeah. Little League team. He's coaching the Padres. I mean, he's managing he, them. He cannot coach a Little League team. He couldn't coach my dog, you know, playing catch out in the yard. That's difficult to do. That's a very specific wow. skill set. Wow. Wow. You want Andy Green fired? Worthless. I think a lot of he people want worthless. Andy Green fired. But who are you going to bring in? You know, is Rod Barajas no, going to be your coach he, for the rest of the season? Dave Roberts. You never not care. fire hey, anybody because of who you can't bring in. Bring, bring in that little girl. If Mark bring McGuire was still the bench coach, I'd be like, "Yeah, fire Andy Green and let's let let's let let's let Mark McGuire do it." Okay, but how about, now, I don't know. How about uh, if they would have hired Mark Loretta as their bench coach rather than him yeah. being in Chicago? Mark Loretta is the manager of the team. Better. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, I have an idea. Yeah. Hire Burt Grossman. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, he's we already else? proven yeah. to be one in thirteen. I'm an expansion. I'm not on my twentieth year. Look at this right here. Hey, if you give me a couple uh, fifty million dollar a year guys, thing. I'd do it. Look at this football right here. Yeah. A signed football to Linda Welby, explaining that Burt's team was one in thirteen this year. It's a very nice football. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Immortalized forever. And, and, by, and by the way, did I understand this right, Bert, that you actually have signed a contract extension with the San Diego Strike Forces? Yeah. Actually? What do you think about that, Alex? It's classic San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> classic San Diego. <laughs> uh, he was one in thirteen. Give him a raise. Ten years. A yeah. raise and and two years added. Did you get get a raise yeah. and two more years? I as might coach? have. I'm not at liberty. Non disclosure. Wow. Maybe. Yeah. We're Interesting. We, Interesting. We should have. We we should have cameras following Bert. <laughs> You, you should do a real, little uh, hard knock series. Bert, get right. some excitement going. Uh, oh, oh, you do, why don't you do a YouTube no, I can arena do it. hard knocks? I, I can do it for you. I, I absolutely I like do it that. for you. We have it already done. We do it for high school every year. We do a hard do knocks it. for high do school. It. And you don't ever like employ me to do I'll, that? I would love to employ you. Well, I didn't even know you. You know what? What? I, that's... You have another caller on the line. Okay. Hey, Mikey, listen. It is great to talk to you. I really appreciate you watching. Uh, real quick, before you go. As someone who has been a long time Scott and BR great friend, you find yourself um, watching at your leisure in the evening on YouTube rather than listening on the TuneIn app when we're live. Explain to me how you're taking us in. Well, it's a little bit different for me because I'm off, like I'm off work for the summer, and so you know I have, I'm doing other stuff during the day. It's not like on my drive home. Like usually, right around now, I'd be driving home and I'd put you on in the car. But it's a little bit different, so now I listen, you know, grab a beer or two and, and listen to you guys and watch, and, you know, it's great. Uh, you know, but when school starts back up, I'll get back into my routine. What do you think about, uh, I'm sure you've heard the stories of the possibility 
and the expectation that 1090 returns to the airwaves. What do you think about that? Is that something you want as a listener? Like, hey, I just want to get my car and turn on the radio. Or a younger guy like yourself, you say, oh, no, it's fine. I can Bluetooth it on TuneIn. It's fine. No, I, I, I've said this before. I'm a little old-fashioned. I love, I love being able to turn on the radio and have you guys there um, on a set schedule every day, personally. But I'd also love having the flexibility to be able to watch on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram or whatever, wherever else you're streaming. Uh, It's fantastic. And not only that, I can do it um, at my own leisure, you know, on demand. It's great. Mikey, the number one caller on Scott and BR, checking in today from our Callaway headquarters studios, the Corky's Pest Control Studios. Mikey, it's great to talk to you, pal. Thanks, man. Hey, thanks. Hey, don't be a mouth breather, okay? I won't. I'm going to breathe through (laughs) my nose all day long, even if I have a whistle booger. Very good. Burger. Yep. All right, man. Thanks, <laughs> See you later. Man. All right. Now, am I told right, that, that Mike is number one? Wait, but, hold on. Yeah. So if you do revive 1090 on the radio platform, mm-hmm. you're still going to include like YouTube and oh, Instagram yeah. and everything else, you know, right? You know, Bert, it's so funny you're asking, and I'll just take two seconds to just explain this. But, you know, I was having lunch today with Corky from Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. So I'm having lunch with Corky, and he says, tell me the game plan of bringing 1090 back. And I said, Cork, listen, you've been a longtime advertiser with 1090. Let me speak to you right now as if you don't know anything else about what we're doing, but let me try and sell you today. And I said to him, I go, Corky, for all these years, you've gotten what when you bought 1090? He said, I got radio ads. I said, what else? He said, that's it. I said, so you mean to tell me all this time you spent this money just to get ads on 1090? He said, that's right. I said, okay. In the new world, you're going to get ads on 1090. You're going to get ads within our very robust podcast network. Mm. Because if I put out a podcast and a week later it's got 5,000 downloads, that's really not that big a deal. But if 20 of us all put out content and a week later it's got 100,000 downloads, that's real numbers. You're going to get on radio. You're going to be on podcast. You're going to be in our social media because already we put out now Instagram Instagram messages and tweets that say thank you to our sponsors, right? Something that we never did before. Plus, your ads are going to go on to Cited. So as we drive traffic to Cited, all of a sudden your ads are there and people will be able to click on your ads. And we'll take all of this and we'll add it to our high school sports property as well. We'll reach more people in more places. We'll have more eyeballs and more ears on your products than ever before, giving the advertiser and the listener user a chance to do a transaction and we get that credit. And as I told him this today, a very sophisticated advertiser that he is, he was like, that's freaking awesome. To your point, Bert, we'll have the radio transmitter, we'll have YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, and however else we can broadcast. Tune in, we'll have it all, instead of just being on a radio transmitter. Got it. Why the hell are we not doing that six months ago? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because the guy who was running the company was not thinking about the business. He was thinking about desperation and survival. survival mode, yeah was not thinking about building the business. Does it really cost that much more to add those factors? I mean, you're already doing the content. It's just picking it up somewhere else. It's like get a couple of cameras and a computer. It's yeah, not like, that difficult. Is it? Am I wrong? Yes. It is? Yes. How difficult is it? Probably more, a lot more difficult than you think it is. What do you, why? What's, dude, we're taking a, a camera that's the size of a half of a soda can and we're broadcasting from anywhere we want to go. Yeah, but the quality isn't the most amazing. But it's out the quality there. quality here is amazing because it's already been built here. Don't let him rain on your I'm parade. I'm not going to let him rain on my yeah. parade. I will not he do it. Know an I, 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 like, I like to rain him in a little bit. I like to bring him in because... No, no. Let him fly. I know. Let right. him fly. Let me thank another Beautiful one of our eagle. partners. Can't let me thank another high. one of our partners. Then I'm going to get into some more of this content. I want to hear what Bert has to say about a few of these things. Okay. There's Gary Cooper. Mountain Koopa Trust. Loop. Koopa Loop is right. Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. 858-376-1299. 858-376-1299. Can you imagine this? Hey, Gary. So um, we're going to go from the radio... And we're going to go to YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and tune in. And Gary says, what, is, what, what does that mean? That means we're going to try to pick up the, the demographic from uh, 18 to 40 instead of 45 to 55. Well, it means that you had a lot of young people that are going to be watching and listening on you know, more digital platforms. And you're going to expose yourself to mm. a sophisticated listener and viewer. And those are people that are looking to buy homes and thinking to themselves, how am I ever going to do that? Especially young people. How the hell am I ever going to make enough money to have a down payment on a house living in a market like San Diego? That's why you call this guy. 858-376-1299. 858-376-1299. You don't have to buy a $2 million house. You know, you, you can buy a really nice house, build some equity, sell it, make some money, get into another house. 
and get keep, divorced. Call Bonnie Mantel. Get half of the house back if you're lucky. Sorry, I didn't mean to bring you. Call in. Bonnie Mantel. If you buy, you no. Know, first, you get the house Koopa Loop. You build up the equity. Then you call Bonnie Mantel and you try to hold on to half that equity. Okay. Okay. Or you get Barry and Bonnie Mantel to come how somehow work with with Gary Cooper and. I don't even know why they'd all be working together, but I was trying. I like that. A prenup. Prenup uh, real property deal. Gary Cooper, saving you money. 858-376-1299. 858-376-1299. Another guy who spends his whole career saving people money, not playing on social media. And when we told him what we were doing, he's like, I don't know what that is, but it sounds really cool. I'm with you guys. Support our sponsors. Gary Cooper, you're looking to buy a house, sell a house, and you're looking to refinance. This is the go-to guy. 858-376-1299. Gary Cooper. Okay. Bert, let me ask you a question. Question? Question. I missed that sound bite. I know, me too. I missed the whole instant replay machine. Yeah. I got it. I got it. I got that instant replay machine. We have all the sound bites. Yeah. Um, okay, Bert, did you watch the U.S. women's national soccer team on Sunday win their second World Cup, their fourth overall, but second back-to-back? Did I you did. watch the U.S. women? You did. Yes. Did you like sit down and actually watch the game Sunday morning? I did. I watch. You know what's funny? I, I I don't like soccer, but I watch the World Cup and then I watch you know both women's and men's. Yeah, I do watch them. Okay. Can you name any of the women on the U.S. Women's National Team? What's the girl's name with the purple hair? Give it a try. Scored all those goals. Oh, the one with the flag. Um, I remember it, but not really. Something I don't. Know. You don't remember Dolph her Lundgren? I don't. I don't. No, know. no, no, not not Dolph Lundgren. No. I don't remember. Megan Rapinoe. Oh, okay. Does that sound right? It sounds familiar. Have yeah. you seen the cover of Sports Illustrated this week with Megan Rapino? And then what's the other young lady's name? Alex Morgan. Alex Morgan. How can I not remember her name? Alex Morgan, yeah. Alex Morgan. She's the one I got kicked out at Qualcomm Stadium because of, you know? Really? Well, what? it wasn't really her. It was the PR people. They told me I embarrassed the event by having my two daughters meet Alex Morgan after the game. So they, they, that they, was the exact words. You embarrassed the You embarrassed the, the entire event. Wow. I'm like, why? Because I'm wearing a credential and I have my two daughters down here with me and they want to take a picture with Alex, and Alex was on the radio show this week, and we talked about that, and she said, That's yeah, I'll exactly see you there. what they're going to say to Billy Ray. You yeah. have embarrassed this event. Right. <laughs> By bringing Kaplan, you've embarrassed this event. So the women's national team wins the, the, the World Cup, and it, you know there's a lot of... It, it's like, instead of like post-celebration, it's post-controversy. The first mm-hmm. controversy is, do these women deserve to make as much money as their male counterparts? And, you know, some people look at it like, well, they're the better team. In their sport, they're better. The mm-hmm. U.S. women, they are the international leaders in soccer. The U.S. men can't even make it to the World Cup. Mm-hmm. Doesn't it always just come down to money? Like That question's always been really interesting to me because, yes, the women are much better than the men. They have four World Cup titles. There's no denying how much better they are. But, the, I mean, the question is, it always comes down to money and what brings in more money. And that's what they get, get paid off of, right? I still think the men outdraw a lot like get a lot more people at their games and that's the unfortunate part for the women is that that's what it's going off of i believe i could be wrong but it's not just how many people get to the games it's also how many people watch it's it's what television contracts are worth and so for whatever reason uh the men's game apparently generates more money and therefore the men make more money and yet the women are the leaders in their sport and the men are the thus far quite frankly their failures yeah they lost on the same day in a final right so the, the victory was met with, should the women be paid as much as the men? Then it was met with the next one, the next controversy. Should the U.S. women's national team go to the White House? Do you know that was before the tournament? When oh, she they've said been, that. right. They were talking about all this, right? But like she said that um, before they even got to France. What Megan Rapinoe was like, no, F, no, I'm not going to the world. I'm not going to the White House. She said that before. So I know a lot of the controversy was what Trump's tweeted after, but... Why is it such a question now? Like everything for every everybody, sport, every sport. Dave if Roberts it, said it yesterday. What he said? They asked him if the Dodgers win the World Series, are you going? And he goes like, "No." Well, he's not winning, so that's good. Yeah, I mean, and and he's like, already no. Yeah, yeah, he was a no. You know, um, if you are black, you think he's a racist, which I know people talk about this stuff. If you're female, you think he's a sexist, which you know, I mean, there's lots of evidence. There's lots of there's lots of things to, that you could point to. Um, so, and if you're white, by the way, you're like, oh man, I can't hang out with this guy because then everybody's going to think that I'm everything that they perceive him to be. I mean, there's there's no winning with, with this guy. Would you said, go if uh, they invited you? If he invited you, would you go? Okay, so I just want to say one thing. 
I would Sid ever talk to you again if you didn't go? I, I think it's, I've been to the White House one time in my life and I was like a little kid. Then I went to the White House probably, I don't know, six months ago or so. We, we walked outside the White House and took a picture in front of the White House. I've never been in it and I've never met a president. I've never met a living U.S. president. I met Trump long before he was president, but I've never met... On oh, Epstein's plane? Where'd you meet him at? Who's Epstein? The guy who... No. The Lolita Express? I don't know where you met him. You didn't I met tell him, us. Uh, I met him one time in, in Palm Beach at Miralago, his place that he goes oh. to all the time. Mm-hmm. I snuck in. And then, um, and then I met him one time in New York at Central Park. I was emceeing an event. And he was a celebrity putter, like, you know, a hundred foot putt for a million dollars for charity. And he was a celebrity and I was like the MC guy. Trump was like cool before he started running for president, right? Like he, he gets mentioned in like a million rap songs all the time. Like back in the day, Trump was a, like a huge celebrity and he was always like cool until he started running home for alone, president. Home Alone, yeah. He was a, yeah, he Home was Alone too, yeah. So this whole U.S. Women's National Team, it all gets politicized. You know, I guess that's kind of my You didn't point, answer my question. Which was, would I go? If you were invited to the White House to, to meet with the president, would you go? Probably so, mm-hmm. because I would want to take politics out of it, and I'd want, to, I'd want to go. I'd be like, I'd want to go into the White House. I want to walk through the Oval Office. I'd like to have a lifetime keepsake of me and an active U.S. living president in the White House. Whether so you I don't like, experience it, you just—it's not about the individual; yeah. it's about the institution. Yeah, for me, it's right. All that's right. right. How about you? Would you go? Whew, that's a tough one. I don't know why. I won't even go to Charger games. Why would I go? To, <laughs> why, why, why would I go there? I'm just—if if, um, if you were invited to go to the White House, would you go? No. Political reasons, or like you don't want to travel, or you're not interested. Well, why no, not? I'm just not interested in it. I mean, I, I, if I look back, probably Ronald Reagan would be the only one I'd want to go see. I don't know George Washington, but... Oh, really? You're a big George Washington guy? I am. Really? You know, I'm from Philly, so... Yeah, right. How about you, Alex? Other than that, it's just not really that thing. I don't know, I'm kind of torn because you can go and, like, get a good place right behind Trump and just have, like, a resting bitch face the whole time, (laughs) like Jose Altuve did uh, when the Astros went. He just did not want to be there, but he went. Um, So, I don't know. I'm kind of torn, but I don't think I would go. Um, Is it it a Hispanic, Mexican, build the wall kind of thing? It's a lot of things that he said against... Uh, just Mexicans in general and a lot of stuff that would affect family members of mine that I don't agree with but mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it's like a political thing I think it's directly with that I don't really there's a, a lot of things that Trump says yeah it's a what personal he, thing so we're talking yeah. about you you want to go to experience the institution him aside but a lot of people can't put him aside from the institution I'd like to go and have some Chick-fil-A because you know he, he serves fast food do you guys know McDonald's. that today at Chick-fil-A is um, you can get a free sandwich did you know this today all around the country around here? did you know did you know this no. free well you can't get one um, I can't get one. Bert can't get one. You have to walk in today to Chick Fil A wearing something that is uh, representative of a cow. Hmm. So you know you could like dress up like a cow, or you could wear a T-shirt that has a cow, or maybe like some black and white like things or something. But if you walk into Chick Fil A today and you're you know you got some cow stuff going on, they give you a free sandwich. What if I walk in with like a glass of milk? Hmm. Good question. Don't know. Is it? Are you? you I have spilled to make, some cream on my like shirt. Like cow milk, not not like goat milk, milk or whatever. Almond milk. <laughs> 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 Nothing goat organic-y milk, yeah. and, and and Southern California. Right. No. What, what do you mean? You would you spill all over your shirt? Mm, coffee, but that's no, it didn't have any cream on it. I'm lying. You just spilled coffee. Yeah, I always do every day. Gotcha. Mess. Okay, listen. Let me get back to these U.S. Women's National Team girls. So, Alex, take us through the video we're about to see. These girls get off the plane from France. Is this right? And yeah. then they. Are they're in New York City for a parade, right? Yeah, and this is just them getting off the plane and looking trashed, and they start singing Queen. So I see Alex Morgan. There's Megan Rapino. And she yeah, has a girl. drink in her hand. So. Yeah, girl. Are you gonna do it? I did it. Yeah, girl. I wish I knew everybody's name on the team. Like they all deserve to have their names known. Were they flown over by DHL? No, the plane right there behind. No. Them. I can name more people on that team than I can on the men's team. What is she drinking? <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Yeah, like after you win a World Cup, you just got to be drunk for like a week, right? Like, yeah. You know? It's like Stanley Cup, Super Bowl. They're yeah. always drunk. I, I, yeah, what's and, and you know, it's like you see the Stanley Cup this past weekend. They were showing videos of it on ESPN where they had it somewhere and they made margaritas mm-hmm. out of it. And then, you know, you see the Toronto Raptors celebrating and the Raptors are all drinking and partying. I say, you go, girl. You go, sister. Yeah. You can't drink out of those cups, though. What's that drink that everybody's drinking now? 
It's like a little wine cooler thing now that the little cans and seltzers, white claws. Is that what it's called? Yeah, what? white claws. Is it kombucha or is it no, I don't hard kombucha? I don't know. I got one of those burgers now. You brought it now. Up. You have a whistle burger. Yeah, I know. And, you, and it annoys the hell out of you, right? <laughs> Just blow your nose. What else? What, what else are we looking at? So, so the U.S. women's national team got off a plane. They got into New York. They sang "We Are the Champions," and then they went to go visit Michael Strahan. Yeah, they that was last night. Them landing in New York, uh -huh. and then they went to Good Morning America today. Good Morning America. Yeah. Did they make the rounds? Like, were they on the Today Show, GMA, sure. all of the New York-based national shows? Because otherwise, you know, the games were on Fox. I'm surprised that they. Some of them uh, were on, went to ESPN after Good Morning America. You got um, a picture of this? The whole team was there, right? Yeah. Let's see that, Emwell. Well. There they are, the whole crew. Is there a video, or is this just? Uh, are you, are you, oh. Uh, Megan, you were showing us the picture of yourself when you were in the stands watching the 99 World oh, Cup that's team. That's crazy. And those players inspired you. Now you're an inspiration. What's that full circle moment like you? That you? was crazy, actually. Um, my friend uh, from a long time, we actually haven't even talked in a while, she DM'd me on Instagram oh. and sent me this photo. Uh, we, were, we were thick as thieves growing up. That's me, uh, Becca, and my twin sister, Rachel. Oh. Um, Who's who? I mean, it's, it, I don't even have words. I mean, that's just like, ridiculous. <laughs> I have face paint everywhere. Uh, still remember that logo on the shirt. And uh, to be in this position uh, right now uh, is just incredible. And I to like her rocking the glasses. Yeah, those glasses are sick. Make yeah. change. Mm -hmm. Make change. Because we heard the chant on Sunday, equal pay, equal pay. I know you all are, are out in front about this, and Megan, you especially, and it's like enough of the talk. What is it going to take to make real action happen here, do you think? I mean, I think the conversation needs to move from, you know, are we worth it or should we have equal pay? What can we do now? How can FIFA support the federations? How can federations support uh, their players better? How can the leagues um, support their players better? Um, for all the fans and people, mm -hmm. good morning, America, everybody, <laughs> go watch your team. Watch the national team. Watch your local club teams. Uh, I think that there's a part in this for everybody to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we've really left the old conversation behind us, and now it's time for that action. The new guys have right, let's bring it back. Okay. These girls are they're making their rounds and she's the star now mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. she is the superstar of this whole thing mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. purple hair the cool glasses all the goals scored you know the the willingness to have a strong opinion and use her platform to to push her agenda well I mean, spoken she, she has become yeah she's become like the big star of this whole thing and it, i believe she accepted a invitation by that was it she a senator uh ocasio ortez so they're gonna go visit her who's she uh, one of the senators in New York that's old. AOC, you mean? AOC, yeah. Oh, she's a congresswoman. Congresswoman. Who? This is why I said you're not American and you don't celebrate mm -hmm. 4th of July. Who's the congresswoman of California or congressman? The one, the Camille Harris? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. well, what district? They're all, there's different <laughs> districts. We don't know anything you about know politics. That one, but you don't know the one here. We don't know who politicians <laughs> no, are. No, there's more than one here. Every district has I know. one. We don't know. Isn't it Scott Peters? <laughs> He's know. one of them. Yeah. Duncan Hunter's one of them. Yeah, see? He's I don't a mess. know things. I don't know any of these he guys. He knows things. I don't know any of these guys. Anyway, so um, let me just finish up here uh, by giving a little love to my man, uh, Corky Miser, and Corky's Pest Control. I want to just make a quick mention of them down below here, our Corky's Studios. There's Gary. There's Sided. Keep going. There's Egg Fest. That's, we got to get that we out of there. Of got a Primus. Either. There's Primus. There's Sided again. Keep going, Alec. Oh, there's Corky's. 1-800-901-1102, the title sponsor of our studio, Corky's Pest Control. Had lunch with Cork today, and Corky was saying that, you know, it hasn't gotten super hot out yet which means that the ants haven't started to invade people's homes. And he was saying that this is kind of a slow time of the year. And we're like, Cork, we get it. It's sports. It's the slow time of the year. It's the all-star break. Uh, tomorrow is like the one day of the year where nothing happens in sports at all. Well, ESPN wants you to just tell you that it's ESPYs tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow's the ESPYs, yeah. Thursday mm. is now becoming the day where there's nothing. Oh, is that because the Because I think baseball, there might be like one game. Mm. But like baseball starts up on Friday again. Gotcha. So uh, I just want to give a little love to my man Cork. 1-800-901-1102. Corky's Pest Control, our title sponsor here of the studio. Okay. I mentioned that I wanted to get to a bunch of stuff today. Alex was out yesterday. I, I told you that he had explosive diarrhea yesterday. Yeah, right? yeah. Sorry, Alex. How explosive? Well, you were describing that your, your inability to move away from the toilet. You know, and I said, I understand that emotion. I live that. Every day. Yeah, not just... You asked just me, the whole day you, you asked sat me on if I was wearing diapers yesterday. It's a legit like, question. I was like, honestly, is, you I probably should have, dude. Yeah. Those, uh, legit. You wearing diapers is a legit question. Okay, so... Um, was let that me, bad, Bert? It was... I got a visual of him wearing diapers. My girlfriend Thank got you. it from... The, you know, even worse, throwing up. So it was crazy. Did she also have the explosive back end? She just had the front end. Really? No back end deal for her? 
At least she didn't tell me. Okay, got, yeah, she doesn't <laughs> yeah, want to grocery tell me that. Right. She don't want to grocery around. <laughs> so, well, I got I got another. You live in a one-bedroom apartment? What's that? You live in a one-bedroom apartment? I live in a two-bedroom apartment. How many bathrooms you got? Two bathrooms. Oof, I was about to say, she had to follow you up? Coming uh, she was gone out the front. She made were, it to work. I didn't. Oh make it. God, that would have been horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so because Alex wasn't here yesterday, I didn't have anybody to talk to about this. Mm. Billy Ray, I knew wouldn't have any interest in it. Linda would be disgusted by it. So now I have to at least just have a mention of it. Bert, did you happen to see this yes. weekend the UFC fastest knockout ever? UFC? Yeah. Yeah. That's like Bert. Bert answered that so fast. That's like the joke where where the guy they say. Um, uh, but you only been teasing it for an hour and a half, so okay. it's kind of knew yeah. where you're going. A, a or a, a? Would you rather A be with your wife or B? And the guy goes B, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like right away. So um, okay, so the UFC this weekend. I wasn't watching. I'm not like unless it's a monster mega fight and the whole world's talking about it. It doesn't really register for me. For the UFC, I mean, this is like one of their few golden boys left was fighting. This was John Jones. John Jones, yeah. okay. So for me, for whatever reason, he's never been like, I, I don't no, know why, but he's... Because he gets suspended for doing like cocaine and like hit and runs. Yeah, and he does everything. He does he steroids. He's He's been suspended so often. Did you see that, the, the injuries that Del Santos had? Yeah. Man. What kind of injuries? The guy he fought. Yeah. Uh, he looked like he hurt his knee, like I believe in the first or second round. Yeah. yeah. He tore everything. Yeah, he blew MCL, out his whole PCL, knee, right? ACL, yeah. ACL. Yeah. Meniscus, everything. Menis, everything. Blew out a whole knee. That's why yeah. when you see, like, you watch basketball and they flop and they, they get carried off of cramps. And this dude fought, like, for, like, 30 minutes with a completely blown out Against knee. the best fighter probably in the world. ever. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. I, I That's part of the story I never got to because... Yeah. I the, took it off track, sorry. No, no, because the guy, the guy who knocked out the other guy in five seconds, that became, like, the whole story... Of the weekend, so even it became though, the viral moment of the weekend, which right. is what happens with fights. You get the viral moments, especially in the UFC. There's five fights on a card. You're gonna you're gonna watch the most viral thing that happened. The John Jones fight was pretty boring because the guy was on one leg, and uh, didn't Holly Holm get knocked out in the first? She got knocked too? out hard yeah. too. I was I thought that was gonna make a lot of rounds, but a five second knockout, dude. Who, who, yeah. Go to the pictures, guys. I, I know we can't play video. They'll pull us down off YouTube, and it'll be a whole disaster. But so here's the guy. What, what's this guy's George name? George Masvidal. George Mazdabal. Mazdabal. He's been he's been fighting forever. I think he has like fifty professional fights. How much do these guys weigh? Uh, One seventy. Okay. They had so, major beef too. They did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These two guys had beef. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of beef. Just like beef. major beef. Major. Really. Yeah. So so this guy George Mazdabal. Mazdabal. He comes out. Bell rings. Let's get it on. And he jumps up into the air and kicks this dude in the side of the head. Knees him. Yeah, and I can't, like, you know, you try and follow it, like, like I don't really see him hitting him, and then, you know, you just got to find, like, where the knee hits the temple. And when, when the dude goes down, this guy, George, whatever, Maz he, Vidal. he's already knocked him out. I mean, the guy's out cold, and he's just punching him in his face. Just punching his clean shots Just in. punching his lights out, you know? It was just... Who I mean, whose fault you blame that? George or the ref? I don't blame either of them. I, they each did their job. Yeah, it was it's so George, quick. It's, it's, George, it's George's job to get pulled off. Like, you don't take a chance. You've seen guys wake up. Yeah, and it's a referee's yeah. job to pull them off. Yeah. So go, go to the next photo, because he just starts pounding him in the face <sighs> after he's already photo. kicked him in the in the head, you know? And then and this is the next picture, which is the picture we saw originally. What was the other stuff? Him. You have some other stuff in we there? We had a video, because people asked him, because they were saying, like, why did you throw two extra punches? Did you think that was necessary? Yeah. And then he talked about why he thought it was okay let's take a listen to this play it. i saw some criticism people say the punches weren't really necessary maybe they were super necessary <laughs> why were they necessary what do you mean why were they not necessary because he was already knocked out at that point but it, the referee hadn't pulled me off and my job is to hit somebody till the referee pulls me off so to those people i would say maybe don't watch him and may go back to soccer Ooh. oh my Ooh. i saw some other criticisms perhaps of your celebration afterwards any regrets that the celebration or your behavior in the cage afterwards? Uh, man, there's not too many people that I've disliked. I have over 50 pro fights, and he's one of them, you know. He talked about my manhood, talked about my culture, my ethnicity. Where, where do we drop? Why do certain people get to do stuff You online? So you could do anything. Everything is cool before a fight. You're allowed to do and say whatever you want. Like other fighters are not doing, talking about people's religions, wife, even kids. That's cool. But after a fight, I'm not allowed to showboat and rub it in your face so you and guys like you could see it and be like maybe i don't talk so much because when i cross one of these real they're gonna make me pay for it man hmm. good point but they they asked him also about about practicing this like is this something you actually work on or did that just happen did you see how like he came out and then he sidestepped like he was gonna go into a break dance and then he rushed him 
It was like, see, we went to the side, and then he did like a breakdance yeah. side movie. Remember, you go side He's, to side, and then you hit the cardboard. Mm-hmm. He said that the like guy. That. He said that the guy Ben Askren, who was only his second UFC fight ever, but he's he's a really good wrestler, like amazing wrestler. And he just knew that if I get close to him, he's gonna try and reach for my legs. So it was a piece that he was very predictable, and it was planned all along. Hmm. And that's and his coach actually texts somebody before the fight even started. He goes, George is gonna start by rushing him with a flying knee. So they have proof of the coach texting people that that he was gonna do that. It was planned all along. Wow, I um, I gotta say that the aftermath though of when the guy's knocked out and he's punching him in the face, like. Well, then I, he taunts him after that. Then he comes down and remember yeah, he gets down on the thing the, uh, and starts slapping yeah. him right by his head. Jeez, yeah. man. That reminds That's me great. of the, uh, the, the the fight that I saw this past weekend. Uh, this one was not on pay-per-view. At uh, Disneyland? Yeah. Did you guys see this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> did you guys see great. this? Yeah. And well, you got to pull this up. You saw this, Bert? I did. Okay. I did. 